I'll discuss about surlet life cycles for today, okay? Surlet life cycles. How the surlet life cycle will start? When you deploy your surlet into a surlet container. We know the container, right? The container is what? Tomcat. Usually, we are using here a Tomcat surlet container. What? exactly that container will do when I deploy my servlet application. Let's say if it is a servlet container. If we have a servlet container here. Servlet container. Example, some Tomcat container you have here. So, when you start your Tomcat container, when you start your Tomcat container, what exactly this container will do here? I have a start button and stop button. Here is my container. I want to start it and I can able to stop this container. So what exactly it will do when it starts and what exactly it will do when it stops. Okay. So when I start this container, what container will do? Container will read all the var files. If you have a dot var file, b dot var file, C dot var file. Each var file will describe, I mean, each var file will contain one application. So, what exactly this container will do when you start? It will extract all the var files. It will extract all the var files and it will store your application into web apps folder. A application, B application, C application. It will extract away var and it will keep your required application files into container. Okay. If you deploy var file, that var file is not exactly useful for deployment. I mean, that var file will not execute finally. Finally, what will execute? This var file container will be extract. Var file, your container will extract. After extracting that var file, it will get A, B, C. So, in one single container, we can run any number of applications. One container can manage any number of applications. Let's say if you have only one single application, hello world var. If you have one application, hello world, hello world dot var. If you deploy this var file, finally it will make that var to one application, hello world. Okay, we can make a var file, finally you can deploy that var file. When you start your application, that var file will be extracted by your servlet container. It will be extracted and it will deploy into your container. So after extracting, what it will do? We know the directory structure, right? Inside hello world, here we can have view pages our views we can have here under views there is one folder web inf from this web inf we have classes and we have libraries and we have web.xml so your container it will read web.xml file now it will read your web.xml file it will read your web.xml file here we have a libraries folder classes folder and one file web.xml file from your application inside application it will try to read webinf inside webinf it will read web.xml file so this xml file container will read once after reading this xml file container will do what it will create two types of objects one surlet context object and one surlet config objects two objects it will create here so, once if it reads web.xml file, how many servlet context and how many servlet config objects here it will create? Okay, leave about your servlet classes. We know when our servlet class will be initialized. Let's say here if you have a hello world servlet class. Here I have a hello world servlet. Hello world dot class file I have inside this classes folder. When this hello world class object will be created, if it is a servlet, either at the time of deployment time or else at the first user request we know right if you put load on startup for your hello world class then at the time of starting time this class object it will create or else at first user request whenever the first user request for this class it will create your object so your object can create in two ways either first user request or else at the time of loading time itself in two ways your servlet object it can create okay before creating your servlet object what it will do it will create two more objects what are those for your entire hello world application for your entire hello world application to make available some data to all the servlets to supply some inputs to the all the servlets getting 
I have a hello world surlet here. Along with this hello world surlet, if you have one more surlet, let's say here if you have multiple surlet classes, A surlet class, B surlet class, some C surlet class. I have three surlet classes here inside this classes folder. Under this classes folder, I have three surlets, A surlet, B surlet, C surlet. If you want to give any input to all the surlets, for A surlet and for B surlet, for C surlet, I want to give the same input. I want to give one input to the surlets. I want to pass same connection object. I have a JDBC connection object and that connection object I want to give to the A surlet, B surlet, C surlet. I have only one resource. I want to share that resource to the all the surlets. So then what I should do? I need to make it public. Right. If I have a single resource and if I want to share that same resource to all the users, then that resource need to become a public resource. So where that public resources we need to put? I have a connection then and that connection I want to share to A, B and C. So if you want to share a connection to A and B and C, you can keep that connection under a context scope. There is one surlet context object. So your surlet container for entire your application, it will create one context. It will create one context, surlet context. You can call it as surlet context. It will create one object, surlet context object, surlet context. For entire application, it will create one surlet context. Means it's a public area. In this area, you can put your required data. This data, any surlet can be accessed. Let's say if I put some name here, if I put some name here, Naveen. So this Naveen, who can access? A, B, C. Any surlet can access. But within the application, within the application, if you have 10 surlets or 100 surlets, how many number of surlets? Any number of surlets you can have here. So any number of surlets can access this name. Why? Because it is there in public area. Okay. Surlet context is the public context scope. So if you keep anything here, any surlet can access throughout your application. Getting? So it is a common area for all the surlets. It is a common area. In this common area, A can put any data. That data can B can access. B can put any data. That data C can access. Means it's a public area in that public area if you put anything anyone can access it so your surlet context to scope area is a public area so then any surlet can access this context data who will create this surlet context object are we writing any surlet context here no your surlet container will create that object okay when you start a application for each application for each application it will create one one surlet context object let's say here if i have multiple applications hello world dot var file some registration application dot jar file var file okay some durga soft student management system dot var file if i have three applications here so how many surlet context objects it is going to create for each application one one surlet context object for each application one surlet context object it will create who will create your surlet container for what it will create the surlet context to keep public data shareable resources it will put here shareable resources in a sense if you want to share same thing to the a b and c that shareable resources you can keep under surlet context who will create the surlet context your surlet container will create <coughs> okay it is a common resource for all the surlets but if you want to make it private for A only, I want to supply some data. For B only, I want to supply some data. For C only, I want to supply some data. It is public area, right? In this public area, I mean, if you put anything under public area, anyone can access. But if it is your private area, then only you can access, right? So here, along with this surlet context object, for each surlet, for A surlet, for B surlet, for C surlet, it will create some private areas also here. Those private areas are servlet configs. Servlet config. Servlet config. It will create servlet config objects along with your servlet context objects. Servlet context area is a public area and servlet config area is a private area. If I put something here in this servlet config object, it is only make available to A servlet. If you put anything here, only B servlet. If you put anything here, only C servlet can access. So, a surlet config object is a private for your surlet, but a surlet context object is public for your surlets. Getting? If you put anything under surlet context object, it will make available this data to 
all the servlets means it will share your data to all the servlets so which data we can put here public data which is shareable data so your shareable data you can put here so then that same data can share by number of servlets so what you can do here you can read data from here you can store data also here okay if your a servlet if it requires data it can access data from here at the same time it can store data also here so if i store from a servlet if i store some name navin here so who can access this anyone can access this and anyone can modify this if it is a public anyone can access anyone can modify okay the data whatever the data you are going to store under servlet context is it is not a unmodifiable data unmodifiable means it is not a final data okay so if you put anything here that things can be override by any servlet because it is a public context and if you want to put something here and if you want to make it private to your servlets then you need to keep the data under servlet config how many servlet config objects it is going to create for each servlet one one servlet config so if i put something here if i put something a here b here c here this a can access by only a this b can access by only b this c can access by only your c okay so context will create for entire application config will create for each servlet for each servlet one config for each application one context object will be maintained by your servlet <coughs> container when it will do this job after reading web.xml file before reading or after reading after reading your web.xml file it will do this job it will create one servlet context object based on each servlet for each servlet it will create one servlet config object and how it can put common data here from where i can give that common data to container i need this data is a common data from where i can put inside web.xml file you can put some data that data it will read and it will keep it into context object and config object if you want to put any data under context object i want to put some name here i have a servlet context object inside that context object i want to store some name something name equal to navin i want to store this name under servlet context area and inside each servlet config i want to put a equal to i want to put some data here confidential data a equal to 1 to 3 b equal to 1 to 4 c equal to 1 to 5 some numbers i want to give a to the a servlet b to the b servlet c to the c servlet and i want to give one name to the servlet context so this data you can supply from your web.xml file how we can supply inside web.xml file we have a main root tag the root tag name is what web app web app in between web app and web app you can configure any number of servlets here servlet servlet name the servlet name is i have a servlet b servlet c servlet and d servlet a servlet a s a servlet servlet name and servlet class servlet class a servlet and if you want to keep any data only for a servlet if you want to share some data to only a servlet which data i am going to share here a equal to some 1 2 3 this data i want to share to a servlet so then what you should do in between this servlet and servlet here we have one tag init param param name a small a right this is param name small a <coughs> and param value the value is what something 1 2 3 param value finally close init param so this data it will share to which servlet only a servlet within the servlet and servlet for which servlet we configure this data a servlet for a servlet i have a init parameter a and the value is 1 2 3 so it will create one servlet config object for which servlet a servlet in the a servlet which data it will make available a a equal to data 1 2 3 it will make available only for a servlet and if you want to make b equal to 1 2 4 for b servlet so then again one more servlet configuration servlet in between your servlet and servlet 
सर लेट नेम समथिंग बी सर लेट एंड सर लेट क्लास सर लेट क्लास बी सर लेट सो हियर फॉर बी सर लेट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू शेयर एनीथिंग अगेन इन इट पैरम इन इट पैरम इन बिटवीन इन इट पैरम एंड इन इट पैरम यू कैन पुट युअर रिक्वायर्ड पैरम नेम बी एंड द पैरम वैल्यू वन टू फोर again for c sir let you can configure again c okay so by using this init parameters we can store data into which object sir let config object using this init parameters you can store data into sir let config object this data it will store into sir let config object and for each sir let it will create one one sir let config object so Let object it will create here. In that select config object, it will store a equal to one two three. And whatever the select config object it will create for b. In that b it will store b equal to one two four. And again for c, c equal to something one two five it will store. And if you want to put any data into context, means if you want to make the data public, if you want to make available to all the selects, instead of putting under init parameters, there is one more parameter. Context parameter, context param. This context param you should not write inside surlet. Outside the surlet you should write. Inside surlet if you write, it will keep the data under surlet config. If you keep it outside the surlet, then it should be context param, context param. In between context param and context param, in between context param and context param, here param name, something name. parameter name and the parameter value param value okay now this data it will store under which object it will store it under sir let context object so this data who can access this sir let can access this sir let can access This data can access by this surlet and this surlet, but coming to this data only, this surlet only can access. Okay. So where this data it will make available your Tomcat container, whatever the surlet container you have, that surlet container by reading this web dot xml file, whatever the context parameters data you have here, that data it will keep under context object. Whatever the init parameters data you have here, that data it will store under. Config object. Okay, so if you want to supply any inputs like command line arguments in our code Java, we can pass data by using command line arguments, or else by using scanner we can do it. Right. If you want to pass any inputs to your servlets, now what we can do here? We can store data under init parameters or context parameters. Means we can store data under servlet context object, or else we can keep it under servlet config object to share data to our servlet classes. We can do this job here. Okay